Hi everyone, replay viewers, live viewers. I'm Jennifer Ho. I am with Douglas Ellenon, but today I am here not as an agent. I am here as a dear friend of this amazing woman, Hedda Batwin. Uh, for all of you who goes to the gym with her, for all of you who works with her and everything, and for the family and friends, I just want to let you know I am doing this because this woman beside me, Hedda, is such an inspiration. She is 92 years old and she is as sharp as she could be. And the reason I want to do this story about her, hopefully we could do this more than just one day. Uh, I want you to get to know her. And here she is. Please welcome Hedda Batwin. How are you? This is such an honor for you to allow me to interview you. I've been dying to do this for months. I have known you now three years now, maybe. So why don't you tell everyone more about yourself? Go ahead. I was very, very fortunate to be born into a beautiful family. I was an identical twin, and we, there were five children in our family. And I had a very smart mother. She had such good values. She knew the importance of eating well. The diet was superb. She made everything fresh, and it was always vegetables and fish and and milk so that we'd get adequate calcium in our diet. And she never let us sit. We were our children that really moved all the time. And when I was five years old, she gave us dancing lessons. We oh, were, wow. Yeah, we were doing tap. And then when I got a little older, I did ballet. And I've been loving, loving to be, I was in every sport possible. I was an ice skater. I was a skier, a tennis player, all these, you know, great. And I always went to the gym. And there was one period there where I ran a dance school. Oh, wow. When was that? Dance. How but, old were you? Uh, I was probably about 30. 30 I, years old. I was doing it as a, a fundraiser. Um, okay. She, she was born in 1929. Seven. seven. Now, 1927? Yeah. I did get the dates wrong. I think I wrote May 1929. Uh-oh. Anyway, uh, 1927. Yeah, you're right. I, anyway, um, what is it like? Because back then, there's a lot of things that women were not allowed to do. Girls were not allowed to do. Back then, girls were just, you know, stay at home, get married, have babies. That's pretty much what a woman's life was all about. But yet... On the other hand, your mother was That's an was, exceptional woman who actually allowed you to encourage us. encourage you to be more than just being and you know you know just stay at home or anything. Don't get me wrong, I I I have respect for all that stay at home mom and all that. We work hard. Being a mom is not an easy job to do. I think it's the hardest job, but at the same time, the most rewarding job to be is a parent. So, I just came from her apartment. Uh, hold on. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Tom. Thanks for joining. Um, so, you run a dance studio. You dance. You played sports. How many were you in the family? There were five. There's five of you. And you were telling me that your dad was from Ukraine. Right. He immigrated here. Your mom was born in New York. In New York. Were you born in New York too? No, we were born in Newark, New Jersey. In New Jersey. Now, just to give you an idea, so the reason I'm doing this is that you have to understand, she's 92 years old, but what's amazing about her is that she still goes to work. She goes to work. She, she'll tell you more about her job because she has such an amazing job. She goes to the city every Thursday and Friday. She gets up at four in the morning just to go to job to, to her work, and what's that what's that day like for you? Because you get up at four in the morning, and then I am on the train by five thirty, and I get to New York and I take the subway, the six subway up to Hunter College. Then I take a bus across to York Avenue, and my office is on Seventieth and York. So she walks. After the bus, she walks like two blocks. Yeah. Which most people 
me, for example, might actually take an Uber because I will not walk, <laughs> which is embarrassing. Uh, so tell them about your job because you have such a special job. Yeah. You act, have actually changed a lot of people's life. Tell them about it because that might help some of the viewers who might have the same problem as your, the patients that you see because, you know, obesity, diabetes is one of the problems, big problem that we have here in the U.S. And a lot of people would think, oh, it's not easy to manage. I don't have the money to eat healthy and all that. I don't have, you know, what would be your best? Uh, tell them about what you do, actually. Okay, actually, I see patients in the clinic, and I'm, I'm part of the Comprehensive Lipid Control Center, working with at the Rogerson Institute. Now, originally, when I graduated from uh, college, I got a, uh, when I got my, uh, I was a pre-med at NYU uh, when I was younger, then I got married, had three kids, and I went back to Columbia University for nutrition and public health. And my first job was Rockefeller University in hyperlipidemia, which means high cholesterol levels. And we had children that were dying at the age of 10 because of their high cholesterol. Was, it could be as high as 600, 800. And they did, came across a technique called LDL apheresis. It's a dialysis technique that removes, reduces the LDL. And today, so we moved over to Robeson, which is a kidney dialysis center. And so we were able to help these children. There are some of them that are now in their 30s and they're healthy and they're living well. But uh, we're, I'm constantly working with these children today to help them reduce their diet with their LDL uh, apheresis treatment and they're going to be able to live and have a healthy life. But I'm part of a team where we're doing constant research in how to help people prevent heart disease or reduce harm. Lately, I, I've been working with diabetes, type two, not type one, but type two, and they have very high triglyceride levels and they are usually, uh, all we need to do is get them moving, active, and get their diet properly and get their weight down. I just recently had a patient who was weighed 350 pounds and he was on insulin for 10 years and he had high blood pressure and he had sleep apnea. And I said, you know, I can help you if you work with me. And he decided to work with me and he lost 120 pounds. He was six foot four. So he w went down to 120, uh, 220 pounds and he ate the diet according to what I taught him so that his blood sugars wouldn't go up and down and fluctuate. And he got on the treadmill for one hour a day, and after a year and a half, he was no longer diabetic, no longer had sleep apnea, no longer had high blood pressure, and he is healthy without any medication. So I'm very inspired to know that I do have the answer of how to help these people. And diabetes is reversible. Oh, I did not know that. I thought it's not. It is type two, not one. Okay. Type What's the difference is, between type one and type two? Type one is an uh, immune problem. Okay. But type two is where their insulin is not being produced. Because of diet. Least, it's called insulin resistance. And, and when they're put on the proper diet, but the exercise is so important. Okay. Now, so this... Uh, this person basically no need the surgery he did it on his own by just changing the diet and exercise and exercise now a lot of people who me included a lot of people here actually uh, would have difficult you have to understand the reason this is important to me is like I was pre-diabetic and I reach out to Hedda because most people have the first thing she told me 
when I found out and she said, first thing people normally would do is cut carbs. There, you, you are not supposed to have zero carbs, right? Right, right. Because That's the, mistake and misnomer number one. You are not to cut all carbs because you need carbs to... For, for your blood sugars to uh, be at a normal level. So that's, remember, glucose is energy. Okay, so that's number one. And another thing is like a lot of people, especially Thanksgiving is in, a two, in two days. <laughs> a lot of people when they think, when they hear of the word diet, for them, it means not eating or for them to like, I've heard people starving themselves till 1 p.m. And then what happens is one thing I learned is that if you try not to eat special things that you like, like chocolates or chips and everything like that, what happens is if what I notice is that when you deprive yourself, you end up binging on a whole box of chocolate, then that's worse. And I remember what you told me is uh, each person is different, don't get me wrong. Like, for example, if you want to control your diabetes or you don't want to be diabetic, I remember you said that for someone you could have 30 to 45 grams of carbs three times a day. And then you're allowed snacks twice a day with 15 grams of carbs. Like for someone like me, I would not know what 30, 45 grams. I used to check when I would go to the grocery store, I would check on the sugar. Apparently you don't check on the sugar, you check on the carbs content because the carbs after a certain number become sugar. Well, uh, the foods that contain carbs are vegetables and fruits and starches and milk. That's another thing. I thought that carbs mean bread, pasta and all that and I remember <laughs> when I was just eating salad and I like corn and then I put like a cup of corn and Hedda says no corn is carbs. I thought okay forget the carbs. I put edamame thinking it's soybeans and then she said no that's carbs too. But there are good carbs and there are bad carbs. The bad carbs are all the white bread, all the and pasta, the refined, white anything rice. Anything made from refined uh, flour. And then, but edamame is basically a complex carbs, which is not that bad, but everything, I think what she tells people is everything in moderation. Right, right, right. So, um, what, if, if, I hope you don't mind, maybe like next week we'll do another interview. We're not ending the interview, don't get me wrong, because I bet a lot of you have questions on tips on being healthy. Uh -huh. Now... The reason I ask her to tell you what her day is like, so she works two times a week, Thursday and Friday. At 92, I know people who are in their 50s or in the 60s, they feel like they're, they can't move. I remember, remember when we were at Mix, there was this guy saying, oh, I'm in, I'm in my 50, I <laughs> don't feel like going to the gym. But she is a perfect example tell her what your day is like on a monday or on a wednesday well, she, okay ahead. on monday i go to a dance class at 10 30 and then at 11 30 i go to a pilates class and then i take care of any other things that i have to be you know whether it's shopping for food whether it's filling up with gas whether it's she but, still drives, by the way, guys. Yeah, I have good eyesight. And then, uh, and then on Wednesday, uh, on Wednesday, I do. I get up early and I do kickboxing, and then I do uh, uh, abs, class. and then I do dance. Yeah. Okay. You have to understand the ab class that she goes to. Even I can't do it. The bar class that she does. I can't even do that bar class. It's embarrassing. But the thing is, like, for her age, she still does all that. And on a, this is what her Sunday is like. She, okay. I get up at, at 6.30 and I go in for an 8 o'clock class and I do Pilates. Then I go into a spinning class and then I go into a dance class. Mind you, the dance class we have are pretty intense and she's able to keep up. Now, what would you say to people out there that feel like, oh, I'm in my, you know, I'm old, 
I don't have your energy. You're blessed that you've been active since you were five. But for someone who's just starting out, who, who basically don't know what to do, they don't have, okay. We have people that can't join a gym. Uh, joining a gym it could be expensive. So what would you recommend? Uh, what, walking half walking an hour? Walking is very good. There's nothing wrong with walking. If you walk for a half hour, that's good. You just walk uh, in the streets or you find an area in the shopping areas or any place. But you've got to keep the blood circulating and the muscles get stronger the more you exercise. Okay, for people who sit all day with your day job, and what would you recommend to just like, just walk every once in a while? Does that half an hour a day should be like full half hour or can you do, just do it like every five minutes? Every, like You can break it up into segments, 10 minute segments. Oh, okay, yeah, gosh. It doesn't have to be continuous. So it would be actually good for some companies who actually let their employees just get up and walk around. They should provide facilities for them. Oh, uh, okay. Now for, um, I also wanted to interview Hedda because tomorrow, yesterday, News 12 actually came and interview her. So she's gonna be in News 12 maybe tomorrow no what's today wednesday no today tuesday. tuesday so tomorrow oh my god I'm, i can't even remember so tomorrow it could be shown tomorrow at five o'clock on news 12 um, uh, an interview with hedda and another thing is that this beautiful lady is gonna be at the um, she's a guest in uh our friends uh, billy blanks jr he is going to have a TV show called Dance It Out that's airing February 5 on Lifetime. And what's nice about that show, uh, talking what we're talking about being active, for some of you who basically, let's say for example, I know someone who is, let's say, if you have MS, for example, or if you have, you know, okay, if you have disability, for example, yeah, you can't really go walk. What would you recommend for them as a form of exercise? Well, they could even be sitting in, in a chair and, and letting their arms go out, bringing their knees to their chest, moving their body so that they get flexible muscles and it increases the blood circulation. But they, they can raise their hands up, they can move. All and just basically, of, okay. Um, someone was actually, my, my GP one time had told me that, okay, exercising, you don't need to go to the gym or anything like that. She said, how many of us, for example, Thanksgiving, if you're not going to be cooking, most likely you'll be sitting down, enjoying the parade, sitting there like, you know, in the morning. So he was, she was telling me like, you could just move your legs, move your arms while during commercial break. <laughs> Or during commercial break, just get up and like go get water, come back, and all that. Now, when it comes to diet, what I notice that a lot of people actually drink soda. That's very bad. Kids drinking soda. Very bad. And I think diet coke or diet soda is also not good for you because no. of the artificial uh, sugars. Yeah. Artificial sugar. So um, not good. So they cause inflammation. Oh, and a lot of the problems of all diseases is based on inflammation. So you want to stay away from all the simple sugars. Oh, that's good to know. So I'm just going to say hello to all the... Hi, Derek. How are you? Amazing photographer, by the way. And in Facebook Live, I have Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello, Wayne, Oliver, Charles, Jen, Jess. How are you? And Kim. Do you guys have any question that you want to ask Hedda while she's here? Um, oh my God, I just saw her apartment and I was looking at some of the photos. You have one particular photo that I love with your twin sister. You were sitting on a piano. You have to understand, Hedda knows how to pose. And I remember you were telling me, way back that your mom had show you like if they're gonna take a photo you have like the like you and your sister would know exactly how to pose and everything i mean it's really adorable 
And with Heather's permission, I'm gonna make a video of that and post it on, you know, in social media. So you were 15, 14, 15, but you were in like some kind of uniform. It's, yeah, it was a civil air patrol. It was for children. It, they were being taught all about airplanes and everything. Oh, wow. So you actually were helping and, oh my goodness, that's good to know. So you and your sister were very active. You did everything very, together. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she has a photo when her and her twin was dating twin brothers too. <laughs> that was cute. In college. In, in, in college. You. Oh. So, okay. Um, just to give you more background. So when she, she graduated at NYU pre-med, majored in biochem. Bio and chemistry. Biochemistry. Now, after she graduated, her mother told her to get married and right. settle down immediately because your sister was married. Was married. So you did that. Yeah. Um, then what happened? You raised your children. I had three children. And, and when the last one was ready to go off to college, my, I decided my son was in Berkeley and he was a pre-med. And he said, I don't want to be a doctor. I want nutrition, and I'm going to Washington to work on legislation. Oh, wow. I didn't know why so, you did that. Yeah, so uh, I, at the same time, I applied to Columbia, and uh, I got in, and I got a master's degree in nutrition and public health. And my first job was at Rockefeller University in Hypercholesterolemia. Hi, Billy. <laughs> Billy Blanks Jr. is watching. <laughs> Hi, Billy. <laughs> we were just, Billy, we're, we were just talking about your show, Dance It Out, airing on uh, Feb 5 at Lifetime Saturdays at 1030. Um, what's nice about Billy's show, you'll see, is that, you know, it allows you to, um, to as you said, Hi, Heda. Hi, Jennifer. You guys are beautiful. Oh, thank you. It allows you to actually, um, it allows you to move and dance with him and, and you know, with the TV. And it, it, we, we experienced what that was like and it is really amazing. And I can't wait for you guys to see the show on in February 5th because the guest that he had uh, during the show, Hedda is one of them. It was just, you, you'll just have to see it. And I, I assure you, it's one of those things I know would be very successful because it was such a brilliant idea to get people to get up and just dance and you know oh, it was so much fun with, with Billy you know you don't have to be a dancer to be in his classes and what's one of my what's the favorite thing you love about Billy's class since he's listening he's so marvelous as a teacher and you follow him and you feel so happy because True. it's so graceful and it's so much fun and the music is so good. But I, I just love his class. There's a feeling inside of me that I don't get from anything else but that class. That is so true. So, okay, so, hi, oh, Eddie's here. Hey, Eddie, hello from, <laughs> Eddie is now in Florida. Eddie, thank you for joining, how are you? Um, Eddie is one of Hedda's also favorite teacher. Sadly, he moved to Florida. Florida, you guys have no idea how lucky you are to have him there. Um, <laughs> she, so she takes Eddie's class, she takes Billy's class, and she takes Pablo's class. So she does Zumba Mondays and Wednesdays. And Eddie is like, oh, look, all the hearts for, for it to you. See, okay. Just for you guys who can't see what the uh, people are typing, this is how much you're loved, Hedda. <laughs> Bill, Hedda basically, so Eddie, uh, Billy said, um, Hedda's story is amazing. It really is. Eddie said, so Eddie's watching. Eddie said, hi, Hedda, love you so much. <laughs> and then Billy sending hearts. And then Eddie, Eddie said, Hedda is my inspiration. Oh. You really are an inspiration. Oh, <laughs> love you guys too. Keep telling her wonderful story. Well, that is actually, um, that's my plan actually. Is I want to share Hedda's story because what she is, is, you know, you are really such an amazing person. When I was at the gym yesterday, as you noticed, she, <laughs> she was doing Zumba. After just doing an hour class with Billy, she had to go another class. 
<laughs> and, and, you know, people at that gym really adore you. Um, Everyone loves you. And I know you say a lot of nice things about Billy and Eddie and all the teachers, but one thing that I hope you realize is, just for me, oh, I'm going to cry. Oh, no. Um, is that you are such an amazing woman. Um, you make us so inspired. And, and, and you just, you, you may not know, but you change our life by just being really? there. You really do. I mean, the, your, she, her classmates in bar, her classmates in Pilates, <laughs> in dance, when they hear that you're going to be interviewed and everything like, oh, please let us know. Because I mean, look at her. She's 92. She's sharper than I am when it comes to my brains. Oh my God. Um, thank you. Uh, and then uh, Susan, hi Susan, thanks for watching. Please share because she does have a lot to tell. Uh, this is not, this time is not enough to, you know, tell you what a wonderful person she is. And I guess, you know, your biggest, I think what is very important because you are, is basically your mom, the training of your mom. Absolutely. The way, the values that she instilled with you, although, you know, keeping active and everything. Um, what would you tell everyone? What would you want to share with them? Like, what's your secret to you being such an, you know, being healthy and everything? I think that I enjoy my life. And I think being able to enjoy whatever you do, you've got to put effort in. It doesn't come without any effort. And I'm always planning ahead. Today, I never have one day that I don't do anything. I move and I stimulate my brain. I had a private practice. I worked and, and I also did uh, work for uh, a Dr. Drexler who was an endocrinologist. So I've always been able to do a lot in one day. And that gives you pleasure to know that you're capable of it, but you gotta put the effort. Um, just wanna let you know, Hedda's life is not all fine and dandy. It's not always been that easy. Just to give you an idea, a couple years ago, your late husband, he, you have an amazing husband. Yeah, he years. was uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Yeah. And for those of you who have parents that has Alzheimer's or a loved one that has Alzheimer's, what one thing people don't realize is being a caregiver is mm. not that easy uh, because you have to constantly be there with them. And I guess is the hardest part because you've been married, he, he, she's married 68 years. <laughs> and what was the hardest thing for that when you knew that he had Alzheimer's? I tried everything to find out what was the answer to getting rid of the Alzheimer's. Because you started researching on what diet that yeah. you could give him to help, to help him, basically, I remember. Right. But you know what I basically believe the problem was sleep. He had a problem sleeping. Wow. And everything I read about, that's the problem is that you're, when you're sleeping, your mind, is, your brain is being cleared out of all the toxins and it's being purified, you might say. Uh, and, and you have to find the solution to that, the sleeping. And I, I gave him, he was pre-diabetic, but he never became a diabetic because I knew the answer and he was willing to follow. And I had him walking and walking. Yeah. So there's hopes that we will one day know That's the answer so true. to That is true. And the reason I bring that up uh, is that she works. She was taking care of her husband. She still goes to the gym. And let me tell you, every time I see her at the gym, you look at her, you, it doesn't seem like there's anything that's... <laughs> it, it, she, she always have that smile. I mean, God bless her. I mean, you know, that's why we all love you. Oh, it, it, and the thing is, like, you, you know, that's why I wanted people to know more about you. And um, we'll, hopefully we'll do this again. No, you can't, you're not free next week. Maybe in two weeks we'll schedule another uh, live interview with you 
And if you have any questions, whether it's nutrition related or anything, please feel free to write down in a comment if you if there if there's anything that you want Hedda to you know to answer. I tell you, she is amazing nutritionist. <laughs> She really is. Is there anything else you want to tell everyone? I'm so happy. You flatter me no end. <laughs> and I'm excited by the whole interview. Thank you. The, uh, no, this is our way of telling you we love you. And, you know, we want to share your story to a lot more people because we want to share the love that you give everyone, the inspiration you give everyone. If you please feel free to share it to people. Uh, had a no milk. Oh, oh uh, Eddie said, had a no milk. Haha, ha, love you all. This uh, signing off. Oh, because he has to go to work. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yeah. Susan basically said that uh, you are in her boxing class. Hey, Susan, you want to write what how Hedda is like in boxing? Well, you have to understand her boxing class is what you have the ab class, then the boxing class, or boxing. No, the boxing. And boxing then the first. Ab class. So, in her ab class, I had a photo. She was like doing planks. They like some kind of like side plank. I can't even do a side plank. <laughs> like really, uh, but you know, every you you could start somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah, Hedda is amazing. Roseanne just said, you are amazing. Hi, Tara. See, Tara is, uh, Tara is also with the gym. I think, does she, does she take your boxing class too? I think so. Yeah, so these are all your classmates <laughs> in the gym. I mean, look at this. You are definitely very much loved. Uh, oh, I one thing I learned, by the way, yesterday, we were talking about milk. Yes. So a lot of people now actually have allergies, whether with dairy, in interestingly enough. And for someone who is allergic to dairy, you still need to have calcium. Absolutely. Very important. So for someone who's allergic to uh, what a lot of people now are taking almond milk, because they say it's healthier. Some people say it's a fat. I don't know. Uh, but you were saying that which milk is better? Because almond milk is good, but it has what? High in fat? No, no, it's lacking uh, protein. See, oh, okay. Dairy has protein in it, vitamin D in it. Almond milk has calcium added. That's about it. So there's no protein in it? No protein. Why do you need the protein for people who... We need an, um, a minimum of about 60 grams of protein. And if you don't have enough protein, your muscles, are, uh, your bones are going to be, uh, you'll get osteoporosis. Oh, I, I thought the vitamin... You I need vitamin D and vitamin K2 to take the calcium in your diet and bring it into your bones. To absorb it. Yes. Right, to absorb it. And the protein does that. Well, no, that's a separate issue. Okay. But protein is to develop strong muscles. Yeah, because you need protein you need to build protein. muscles and everything. So yes. sometimes people don't have adequate protein in their diet. They lose muscle mass. Okay. Now, and then that's why we were talking about oat milk. Oat milk is very good. Very good. Yeah, because I know, like, you know, when you see these orange juices and everything, they say it has calcium added. It's basically just like adding a calcium pill a day. That's what that exactly, is. Exactly, exactly. But what's nice, what's important about it is basically the, the vitamin K, the vitamin D, the protein and everything. Now, you and I were talking about, before we sign off, I know everyone has to go back to work and everything. I had, I'm oh, sorry, Tara said, Hedda is amazing. Uh, strong, smart, beautiful, and strong. Amazing lady, see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, she's actually going to class tomorrow. Um, we were talking also about the importance of eating yogurt. Okay, we need a healthy microbiome in our gut. That's a healthy environment. And we need fermented foods to provide that bacteria in our gut. And yogurt is a great food because it has all the healthy bacteria that the gut needs. And then it has calcium in it and it has vitamin D in it. So I highly recommend 
the Greek yogurts are great because they provide a lot of protein and uh, a lot of calcium without uh, the saturated fat. So if you're someone that gets, you know, hyperacidic all the time or you always have stomach problem, most likely you, you need probiotic. That's what yes. doctors say. It helps heal the uh, bacteria, uh, the uh, lining of your stomach. And, and the thing is, like, uh, the reason I bring that up, there is some juices that says it's probiotic, but the problem with that one is high in sugar. So one thing I learned from you last week is that um, it doesn't matter what kind of yogurt that you take, any yogurt, because like if you're allergic to dairy, a lot of the yogurt you can't have. And luckily now you have Soy Delicious that does coconut yogurt and all that. Hopefully they, I heard in the news that they were going to start doing oat, because now we have oat milk. They're going to start, uh, hopefully uh, one of the companies is going to start making oats yogurt. Oh, so really? that would really be good. So what I did, what I learned from you, because I learned from you all the time, is that any yogurt is fine. It doesn't have to be a dairy yogurt. Any yogurt is fine. It has probiotic on it just because it's fermented. It's the fermentation right. that's the one that helps. Right. The fermentation produces bacteria. The that, good bacteria. That, that, right. That make the healthy environment in your gut. And you were saying so, something also about the hard cheese. Well, is it cheddar? I forgot what it is. Well, uh, the thing is on cheese, if you have high LDL cholesterol, you don't want cheese because oh. cheese has <laughs> a lot true. of saturated fat and that is produces LDL and you don't want that. The LDL is the bad cholesterol. Right, right. The HDL is the good cholesterol, which you get from good fats like avocado, right? right. Olive oil. Nuts. Nuts. Yeah. Not too much nuts. Uh, Tara actually has a question. She asked about vitamin C and E. Uh, Tara, what about vitamin C and E did you want to ask? Like how much vitamin C or E you need in your body? Or how important is vitamin it's C or E? It's very important in healing. And, and, and vitamin C is in a lot of your fruits. Tangerines, all the citrus fruits has it. The, the E comes in the nuts. That's okay. in the oil, basically. So if you're allergic to nuts, what can you eat if you can't have nuts to get vitamin E? The oils uh, contain vitamin I'm trying to think of what other... Um, fish. Oh, fish. Okay, so uh, fish is always good. Um, anything else that you guys want to add? Hi, Joanne. Thanks for joining in the Instagram Live. We're not, I'm not forgetting you guys. Uh, I just have more people like watching and asking questions in, um, in Facebook Live. Now, okay, what would be a good everyday diet that you could recommend everyone? At okay. least that they could have. When they give you oatmeal for breakfast, it I contains soluble fiber. And this lowers your LDL cholesterol. There's insoluble fiber, which binds with water. And that helps prevent you from being constipated. But soluble fiber binds with bile acids, which contain cholesterol, and prevent them from getting reabsorbed, so it lowers your LDL cholesterol. So oatmeal is excellent. I, I eat hot, oh, steel cut, because it has the fiber, steel cut oatmeal every morning with some cinnamon in it. In it. Cinnamon helps blood sugars uh, lower. And I add some nuts, I add yogurt, and I add kefir, because that's another uh, fermented milk. And so, and I always enjoy it. I add a cup of blueberries along with it, and I heat it up, and the blueberry liquid is so delicious with the yogurt. So that's a really a good breakfast. Uh, yeah, when she says oatmeal, uh, I mean oat, eating oats for breakfast, it's not those instant oats that you get that's high in sugar. Right. I yeah. actually made a mistake. I'm like, oh my God, that's really good. And when I looked at the ingredients and the, the nutrition fact, yeah. it's like, what, 39 grams of sugar. In, in, it's in, all sugar. In the cold cereals. And, and the cold cereal. And so the, that basically, it, it's more harmful than good because you're 
taking more sugar and the carbs and anything. So those instant uh, oatmeal is not a good idea. Although one may say, well, I really don't have a lot of time. I only have like, what, 20 minutes to get ready. So what Hera does is she cooks the oats, the steel oats ahead of time. Right. And then... Then I take a portion of the oatmeal, put it in the bowl. I put the blueberries, I put it in the microwave for about two minutes and the oatmeal gets hot and the blueberries, the liquid comes out and then mixed with the yogurt is so delicious. These are frozen blueberries, by the way, for those of you who would say, well, you know, winter's around us, the blueberries are not as sweet. So she uses actually frozen blueberries. I actually bought the blueberries, haven't bought the oatmeal yet, <laughs> so I still have to do that. My family will be happy if they actually see me eating oatmeal. Uh, oh, it's for breakfast. Now, okay, so if you guys don't have any other question, so you have oats, okay, you said oats for breakfast. Now, what would be a good, you know, dieting doesn't mean that you have to eat yes, just yes. salad all the time. You need to have meat. Right, for lunch you need three ounces of protein, you need a vegetable, you need a starch, and you need a fruit. So if you took a sandwich, of three ounces of turkey or chicken, or I buy wild salmon in a can. So I oh. make, yeah, huh. let's say the, the salmon is wild. And I make, uh, you know, with a little mayonnaise. And I, so I have a sandwich and then I have a fruit, a tangerine or an apple or a pear or grapes or pineapple. And, and I usually drink uh, a tea or water or coffee. Coffee is very good. There's nothing wrong with coffee. The uh, just to give you guys an idea, um, when I was first told that uh, you know I could eat a lot of fruits, I made a mistake of eating <laughs> too much. <laughs> See what you guys have to understand: tangerine or clementines, which we're gonna have a lot now. Pineapple, mangoes. Those are really delicious fruit because they're high in sugar. So I made a mistake of eating like a lot of the clementine. And what happened when I did my blood work, my blood sugar went up because I was eating too much, too much sugar, uh, too much clementine. I thought, well, it's fruit. Fruit can't be bad for you. One so, fruit. One, <laughs> one for me is a bag. So. So um, that's, I just thought I'll share that with you because, you know, when she says eat fruit, it doesn't mean a whole pineapple. So <laughs> the, so, okay, for sweet, you and I had this conversation, uh, three, three quarters cup of strawberries is equivalent to about 15 grams of carbs, which is a lot of berries and about half a cup of blueberries or any berries. A whole cup of blueberries. Oh, a whole cup. Oh, I got upgraded to another cup. I did not know that. I thought it was only half a cup. So a cup of blueberries is good. Now for like the sugary fruit like clementine or orange, but grapefruit is different though. Grapefruit doesn't have that much sugar in it. Uh, you gotta remember one thing, fruit has fiber. So it doesn't get absorbed as fast as regular sucrose sugar oh that's the difference so you shouldn't be so afraid of the fruit but you want one fruit okay now now okay so so if you were uh, as i say if you want to be anywhere between 30 and 45 grams of carbs at a meal so if you had a sandwich there would be two slices of bread each one is 15 so that's 30 and one fruit is 15, so there's your 45. Okay. You so, can have all the lettuce and tomatoes you want. It would not make a difference. Now, if you want a sandwich and have more in it, then there are certain bread that's better than the others. Not all breads are created equal. You want something that has a fiber that's a whole grain or the whole grain sprouted breads are really very good. Okay. So if you guys don't have any more, oh, hi, Peggy. She's one of the uh, BARC instructors, Peggy, right? Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yes. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Gary. Hi, Robert. Thank you guys for joining. For, <laughs> for some of you who just joined, welcome. Um, but we are going to be signing off. It's been, I don't even know how long we've been on. 
but thank you so much for joining. Please share this video to your friends or your loved ones. We'll do this again. Please write down in the comment whatever questions you want us to uh, discuss when with our next interview with Hedda. Um, anything else you want to tell them? It's Thanksgiving. What's the tips you have? It's Thanksgiving. We're going to be eating a lot, so... <laughs> You can have a variety of foods, don't overdo. You don't have to take more than three to four ounces. Remember the palm of your hand is three ounces. You can take three to four ounces at a meal, but don't take six and eight ounces, that's unnecessary. You can have all the vegetables, and when you have the starch, you cut down so that you have a half a cup. Oh, and you did mention uh, for potato, like starch, like potatoes. Sweet potatoes, darker potatoes than regular white potatoes. Because they have fiber and they have a lot of nutrients in it that the white potato doesn't. And then, um, and then you said red peppers are also really good oh, in a diet. Onions, peppers, uh, celery, carrots, all the vegetables are superb and you can have unlimited amounts. Uh, just want to, like a cooking tip for anyone who likes potatoes. Uh, I make this thing uh, with the sweet potato. Uh, you know, I cut those. The, the more orange they are, the sweeter they are. Yeah. So what I do is I cut them like about this big, like that thick, an inch thick. And what I do is I put coconut oil front and bottom. Just, that, you know, a dash of salt and dash of pepper. I put it in the toaster oven and I bake it like 375. And what it does, what's amazing, because sweet potatoes, I guess, has its own natural sugar, it caramelizes on top. Really, really? So it becomes nice and crunchy on top. And then so then I flip it over. So what's so nice about it is that it's natural sugar, not processed sugar. And what's so nice about with the sweet potato is that it's, it's crunchy outside, and yet because it's nicely cooked, it's like very moist inside. So it's like eating a dessert. So just thought, you know, if you guys want to have some. Um, oh, Roseanne Alberts, you said you have a question. What's your question? Uh, she just typed question. Would you like to type your question before we say goodbye? Let's give her time to, um, to um, type if she has a question. Um, what else? What else can we talk about? And for snacks. Oh, yes, snacks. Snacks, yogurts are another uh, great item. Or a glass of chocolate milk is fine. You know, low fatty milk. There's nothing wrong with the chocolate in the milk. Uh, does it matter that you pick low fat chocolate milk instead of uh It could be whole milk, but it, it all depends. If you happen to have the problem of hyperlipidemia with high, then, then you have to watch the fat. Okay. But if you don't have the problem, it's okay. So here is, uh, I have to sit down because I can't read it. Okay, what is, Roseanne asks, what is a substitute for fresh citrus fruits if you have acid reflux and cannot eat? Oh, actually, oh. that's a good point. Yeah. Well, all fruits have vitamin C in it. So, so you could always have uh, mangoes. Isn't that going to be more acidic, mangoes? No, no, mangoes are not acidic at all. So mangoes, ooh, that's or good to know. Or pears or okay. apples are marvelous. And they have vitamin C too. Yes. Okay, uh, Roseanne, I hope that answers your question. Um, instead of having well, any citrus grapes fruit. Grapes are very good. Really good. Okay, now grapes is high in sugar. So, but they have How much grapes can you have? 12 grapes is equal to one fruit. Oh, that's it? 12 <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I love to eat. I have a seafood diet. I see food I eat. That's my problem. So, uh, Roseanne, I hope that answers your question. So, instead of uh, having a citrus fruit, so an apple is... Uh, it's superb. Yeah. With skin, no skin. That with was, skin, with skin. I had, I had someone tell me, like, uh, like um, the skin is not good for you. But that's where the no, fiber is, right? That's where the fiber is. Now, oh, banana. Banana, banana is, is good because it's rich in potassium, which prevents you from having cramps in your muscles and all that. Right. A half a banana is equal to one fruit. A whole banana is equal to two fruits. See, that's why I get the, the baby bananas because they're <laughs> sweeter. 
Um, hi, Gabby. Thanks for watching. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, Roseanne said you did help. So if you have any other question after this whole video, please let us know. Type in the uh, comment section and we will make sure that we address that. I'll let you guys know when our next video would be because she's going to be busy. The holiday is around the corner. I'm just so grateful. I, the, the people here at her apartment building was kind enough to actually um, shut the um, music off because, you know, uh, with the holiday season, with the background music, I get in trouble with Facebook with the copy infringement. So I want to say thank you for the management here at the, uh, the apartment that you, you're in. So again, hold on, let me get out of the floor. Oh, um, anyway, thank you again for joining. We really appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving. Hedda, thank you, thank you, thank you. You uh -huh. are amazing. Thank you. I enjoyed this. Take care, guys. Now, don't forget to share it to people you know that would be of help, you know, would help uh, Hedda. To all our teachers, with bar, Pilates, dance, we all love you. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Thank you.